Howdy y'all. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. I don't know what's the matter with it. Doesn't even sound like me, but it is. Let me get a drink real quick. <clears throat> I know I got sinus strain. It's real bad. Maybe that's messing up my voice. I don't know. But anyway, it's me, live and in person. Y'all, the, the edges of the hurricane is here, and it is much stronger with very hard rain at times. The wind is very hard. The gusts are very strong at times. The rain pours down for maybe 10 minutes and then it stops. And the RV that I live in has sprung a leak in the roof. I don't know where it's coming from. With this kind of weather, I can't find it and fix it. And so I got a big 16 foot by 20 foot tarp and wrestled hard with the wind to get that huge thing spread over the back half of the RV where the leak is. I am holding it in place with big cinder blocks. It was very hard for me climbing up and down the ladder about 20 times to, to do all of that. But I got it. It is all smoothed out. It is weighted down. And then I went back around the bottom of it where it's hanging down on the sides, four feet on each side of the uh, camper, and went through the grommets with bungee cords and sisal rope to secure it even better. So I am tied down and ready for the hurricane now. I think I will stay in the house during this because it is going to be a catastrophic hurricane if it's not already it is going to be and the house is a whole lot sturdier than my rv the house does have central air and central heat and it was not very old when hurricane harvey hit and flooded the place but it still works but with no sheetrock in here and no insulation in here when I turn the air conditioner on, the cold air goes right through the exterior walls. It makes my electricity bill about four times higher than it normally was, so I don't use the air conditioner. But it's not bad. It's hot, but it's not humid, which I don't understand, but it's not. So the temperature is comfortable. I think it's like 93 degrees right now. And I've got a fan blowing on me. Inside the house, I do have a new bedroom set. That I bought after the flood but I have not set up the bed and that room actually all the rooms are so cluttered with what little bit I could salvage I don't have places to put them you know so I just fill up the rooms there's not room to set up the bed but I've got a recliner that I can sleep on tonight and that will be very comfortable for me Odie is in here with me and Callie the cat comes around at meal time so Next meal time, I'll catch her and shut her up in the house tonight, too. And we will be a lot safer in here than in the RV. So let me get started with what God has given me on ways Satan uses to deceive people to lure them away from God. There are many ways I'm giving you the ones that I feel or the top seven. Actually, it's the, the ones that God gave me, so I guess they probably are the top seven. And I was going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but number one, I think, is the most surprising. The one that I think affects more people than all the others probably combined. And so I'm going to save the best for last. And that it is too long to do in one video. It may be a three or four video series. I'm going to start at the bottom and go up. I'm going to do seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And when you go to my channel, to my home page, and click on videos, that way by doing the last ones first, when you click on it, you'll see the series in the order that it is written. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I'm going to give you number seven first, and then number six, and then number five, and so forth. And that way, that will put them at the bottom of the list, and number one at the top. So here we go. The number seven 
way that I feel Satan deceives Christians, getting them away from Christ, is no faith in Christ. He convinces you that God is not real, that he is imaginary. He has much of the world convinced that Jesus was a good prophet and a good teacher, but not the Messiah. The Bible is very clear that Jesus is the Messiah. The descriptions where he was prophesied in the Old Testament many, many hundreds of years before he was born fits him, describes him, describes his birth, describes his mom and dad to a T. How anybody cannot believe and have faith behooves me. I, I don't understand it. But I was that way for 51 years. But that's the number seven reason. The other reasons, I think, well, all of the reasons, I think, are why it took me 51 years to believe. Because Satan was deceiving me in every way possible. Uh, Job 3.25, Satan attacked Job. And if you know Job, he was a very righteous man. He was a man after God's own heart. He was faithful to God, but Satan attacked him several times with God's permission. In Job 3.25, it says, Job said, For the things which I greatly feared is come upon me. Satan made him slip his faith for a second. He quickly recovered and he repented, but he slipped. Satan is powerful, y'all. You cannot imagine how powerful he is. He's nowhere near as powerful as God, but he is a lot more powerful than any man or woman on earth. He is very attractive. He is very luring. You've got to be alert. You've got to be vengeful at all times. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you lack faith, read the Bible and keep reading the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to tutor you, to translate for you as you read the Bible and then read it some more and more and more. Live in the Word. Live on your knees in prayer to God. Grow close to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you as you speak to God and as you read the Bible and then after you get that faith and become saved, let the Holy Spirit guide you as you speak to other people whether it be in person, in the hospital, on YouTube, on Facebook, or wherever, let the Holy Spirit guide the words that comes out of your mouth so you can join me and others in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ because there's nothing the world needs more than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have you got faith? Have you got faith? Faith is a gift from God. He gives it through His grace. If you don't have it, ask Him for it. If you've got it, but it's little, ask Him to increase it. That is a prayer He will answer. And like I just said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God. Hebrews 3.14 We are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence, our faith, steadfast unto the end. Without faith, we follow Satan because we think sin is fun. First 54, 51 years of my life, or the first adult years of my 51 years of life, I loved the sin that I was walling in. I was very successful. I did not want God. I did not think I needed God. I was having fun, and so I did not have no faith in God at all. All my faith was in me, and Satan had me by the tail. I thank God daily, many times every day, that he woke me up 
and save my wretched old soul. Revelation 21 verse 8 But the fearful and unbelieving, those without faith, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and just about everybody has an idol that they worship over God, whether it's their boat, their RV, their whatever, their bank account, whatever it is. Many people have idols they place before God. If you don't know what your idols are, check your bank statement online. See where your money goes. That will show you where your idols are if you've got any. Anyway, I'll continue here with uh, Revelation 21.8. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And then verse 21, I mean, chapter 21, verse 7, He that overcometh through faith shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. That is what you should strive for every day in every way. Everything you do, think, and say should glorify God. That's God's plan for your life. Believe through faith and enjoy eternity in heaven. Next, we've got Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15, which says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any lest an root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby may be defiled. Y'all do not hold grudges. Do not be a vengeful person. People will attack you. People will come after you. Do not attempt to take revenge. That my friend, is God's job. Leave that up to Him. We are commanded to love our enemies. And that, my friends, is what we must do. I have done, I think, two videos, one for sure, and I think two videos about love, the different kinds of love. You don't love your enemies the same way you love your best friends, but you can love them. You don't love your best friends the same way you love your spouse or your children but you still love them. You don't love anybody the way you love God, but you still love them. So learn to love your enemies. Let God take care of the vengeance. Matthew 5, uh, verse, 54, verse 44 and 45, and this is Jesus speaking, but I say, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Bam. Did you hear that? It said, love your enemies and bless those that curse you. That's hard to do, but it pleases God and it glorifies God. Right here, bam! We are commanded to do it, so let's do it. Do good to them who hate you. And pray for those which despitefully use you and persecute you. And remember, this is Jesus speaking, telling us this. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Let me go back and reread that without interrupting. Jesus speaking in all of this and what I'm going to continue also. But I say, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them who hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So be kind to your enemies. Hatred and bitterness can lead to the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That is one sin you never, ever want to 
uh, do. So have faith in God totally. Trust Him for everything, for every problem in your life, for every bit of persecution. Have faith in God. <coughs> Excuse me. Proverbs 20, verse 22. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. 1 Peter, uh, Peter 2, 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth rightly and righteously. And the only person that can do that is God. You must commit yourself to him that judgeth righteously. And he will judge the evil. That day is coming very, very soon. So have faith in God. Just trust him. Don't let Satan interfere with you at all. God will repay, saith the Lord. I will recompense thee. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of of the living God. And I think that is it. Let me go back and look at page one of my notes again. I, did, I gave you number seven and number six. Number six was the antagon, an, antagonism part, the part about grudges and vengeance. That one started with Hebrews 12 verses 14 and 15. I forgot I I apologize, I forgot to mention that as I was reading my notes in the description box below. I will write all of the scriptures and I will separate uh, number six and number seven from each other so it will be clearer for you. So after listening to this video, please click on the description box down below and read the scriptures for each of the two ways that Satan uses to deceive people away from God, number seven and number six. And tomorrow, hopefully, if I am not too wrapped up and taking care of hurricane business, I will be back with more. Y'all pray for everybody in the path of the hurricane. It is a lot worse here than I thought it would be. I thought I would just get the outskirts of it, and I, I reckon that's probably what I am getting, but it is a lot rougher than I thought it would be. I will be spending the night in the house instead of the camper. Oh, it, it, the house is very sturdy, it's very secure, the inside is a wreck, but structurally it is very sound. It has been through many hurricanes this strong and stronger, so I kind of trust it. <laughs> more than I do the camper. Plus the camper is sitting right between two giant pecan trees. If either one of them is toppled over in this hurricane, it will cut that camper right in half and I don't want to be inside of it when that happens. Y'all pray that doesn't happen because the camper is my abode. That is where I live now. So y'all pray that that does not happen. But for safety's sake, I will spend the night in the house. I'm going to let you go now. If you're not a Christian, place your faith in Christ Jesus, your Lord, your Savior, and your Redeemer. He suffered a horrible death and died on the cross so that you might be saved from the sin in your life, which will lead you straight to hell. And the rapture is coming soon, y'all. All the prophecy that had to be fulfilled before it could happen has been fulfilled. All of the prophecy made in the Bible thousands of years ago describing what the tribulation period will be has just about all been fulfilled and the few that hasn't been is in process of being fulfilled now. So literally the rapture can happen at any time. You do not want to be left here behind during the tribulation period. Listen for God's still small voice and turn to him 
go running into his arms. Do not try to run and hide. You cannot run and hide from God. He is everywhere at all times. Listen for his still small voice. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Please share my videos because the whole world needs Jesus Christ. Give me a thumbs up. I like to see that. Give me comments down below. I like to see that too. And I do try my hardest to respond to every comment. I found three or four this morning that was over a week old that somehow I had missed, but they have been responded to now. So if I'm late getting to responding to you, I apologize. I do try to stay on top of it, but I did find several today I missed. So y'all, oh, and hit the little notification bell so you'll be notified every time I do a new video. And right now I'm trying to do one or two a day because the urgency of being saved is real because time is running out. Don't get stuck here during the tribulation wondering where millions and millions of people disappeared to. It won't be UFOs and I feel the world is already leading up to that. They are preparing for the New World Order and they know they may not believe, but they know a lot of Christians are saying they're going to be ruptured out of here. So they are developing a plan to explain that and to, you know, make people forget about it and not worry about it. Even though every child on planet Earth will be raptured out of here and all Christian adults will be raptured out of here. <clears throat> and, you know, they I feel like they're going to use the excuse that UFOs abducted all of us that will not be what happened I promise you that I don't know if UFOs exist or not but if even if they do it will not be them that took us out of planet earth y'all believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved today you and your household amen amen I love you I appreciate you